Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example is perhaps a little bit easier to understand and easier to follow, but we're going to do this one in two different ways to see how both answers should of course be the same when used two different methods. The first method we're going to use is the concept that the, the cross product or the vector product of two vectors can simply be the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the second one times the sine of the angle between them. In the next method we simply will do the vector product using our matrix and you'll see how we get hopefully the same answer with both techniques. But what we have here is we have a beam that's being held by the support beam right here. Uh, the total length of the beam is five meters. We're pulling on the beam with a force of 500 newtons, 10 degrees below the horizontal. The beam is angled at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So what will be the moment about point A caused by that force right there? So what we could do is with the easy technique would be to say, all right, I know that the, um, well, let me draw the, position vector first. So if you want to draw the position vector, that would be this vector right here. This would be our R vector. And there would be the force. So let me just say that this is equal to the force. Like that, at least the magnitude of the force. And so what we can do is to find the moment about point A. The moment about point A, if you want to find the magnitude of that, that would be equal to the length of the position vector, the magnitude of the position vector, times the magnitude of force, times the sine of the angle between the two. So what is the angle between the two? Well, if we draw a line right here that follows the line of the beam right there, and then we have the horizontal, and then we have this angle right here, it must be the same as this angle down here, so that must be a 30 degree angle. This is a 10 degree angle, so the total angle between the line, the line of the uh, beam and the uh, line of action of the force, the angle between those two would be 40 degrees. So therefore we can say that this is equal to R, the length of R, which is 5 meters, times the force, which is 500 newtons, times the sine of 40 degrees. And let's see how much that is. That would be 2,500 times the sine of 40, so we take the sine of 40, times 2,500, and that gives us 1,607 Newton meters. So that's equal to 1,607 Newton meters. That's the magnitude. What about the direction of the moment? Well, again, you can use your right-hand rule. You curl your fingers in the direction of the position vector, then you turn your your fingers in the direction of the force. So when you go like this, your thumb will point in this direction, so it would be into the board. If we want to put some directions on that, so if this here is the x direction, if this here is the y direction, and then coming out of the board is the z direction, then you can say, oh, we don't need a little arrow there, all right? Then you can say that the moment about point A, if you want to put it in vector format, would be a minus 1607 Newton meters in the k direction in the negative so it's in the negative z direction again put your fingers in the direction of the position vector curl your fingers in the direction of force your thumb points inwards so the negative z direction or negative k direction all right now what we can also do is we can find the moment as follows the moment about point a is equal to the result of the solution of this matrix, which is simply, of course, the vector product, and maybe I should put that step in between so you can see where that came from. So let me go back. Let me write it like this. So it's equal to R cross F, R cross F. It's better to do that. So this is equal to this I, J, and K. So now we want to put the components of the R vector and the components of the F vector, which means we have to find the components first. All right, let's do that. So, for the position vector, we have r in the x direction, and we have r in the y direction. And of course, r in the x direction will be r times the cosine of 30 degrees, r in the y direction will be r times the sine of 30 degrees. So, um, let me write those down here. So, r times the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to r times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to. All right. So R is 5, and the cosine of 30 is 0.866, right? 30, take the cosine of that, times 5 equals, so that would be 4.33. So 
So 4.33, which is equal to r in the x direction and r in the y direction. The sine of 30 is 1 half, so it would be 2.5, and of course that's in terms of meters. So it is an x, a y component, no z component for r, so we write those down. We have 4.33. We'll just leave the units off for clarity, 2.5 and 0. All right, now we do the same for the force. Notice we have an, an x and a y component there as well. The x component would be right here. So this would be f sub x. This here would be f sub y. Finding the component in the x direction that would be equal to f times the cosine of 10 degrees. And the component in the y direction would be f times the sine of 10 degrees. So f, of course, is the 500 newtons. We multiply times the cosine of 10. So 10 times the cosine times 500 equals, that's 492. So 492 point, uh, call it point 0.2. And then, and that would be, of course, newtons. And take the sine of 10 times 500 and we get 86.8. All right, so now we have the x and the y components of the force. So let's plug those in here. So for the x direction, it would be the positive x direction. We have 492.2. And for the y direction, here we have to be careful because in the y direction, it's downward. So this would be negative 86.8 newtons and, of course, zero in the z direction. So now we're ready to work this out. Okay, so this is equal to i times. Now notice, when you pick the i component, you get rid of this column, this column, you work out the product of these two minus those two, so it would be zero minus zero, minus j times, so you cross out this, co this column and this row, so you have those four elements, so it's 4.33 times zero, minus zero times this, so it's another zero, and plus the k component times, and here we'll have something because you cross out the zeros, and this, you have those four elements, so it'd be 4.33 multiplied times a minus 86.8 minus 2.5 times 492.2, like that. So you can see you'll get a negative k component, so 4.33 times 86.8 plus 2.5 times 4, 492.2, and that would be a minus 1606 in the, oh, and the units, of course, you can't forget the units. That would be Newton meters in the k direction. So there's the answer using this technique. Here's the answer using this technique. Uh, we're off by one Newton meter. That's a round off error, so we're not going to worry about that. So you can see that both techniques are valid to find the moment about any point on this beam. And that's how we do that.